For as long as I can remember, my father has worked in a bodega. And if you don't know what that word means, in Spanish, it translated to English, it means an establishment that's part convenience store and part restaurant. My life revolved around the bodega that my father worked at. When I, was at, when I wasn't at school, I was there. When I was bored, I was there. If I wanted to have fun, I was there. I would sit behind the counter and observe as my father attended to the customers with his broken English, answer to go orders, help in the kitchen, and cash people out. And he would say, Luis, pay attention, because when you get older, you'll be doing this too. And as a kid, I would glee with joy because that meant I could eat all the candy I wanted in the store. <laughs> but I wouldn't know how much of an impact my father's statement would have on my life. When I think of other impactful moments in my life, I think about how my mother never really pushed me to pursue any kind of particular job, but to always be a good student. My father would agree with her, but that's what all dads do. He would prefer that I follow in his footsteps. At home, I was boxed between these two options, to be a really good student or to follow in my dad's footsteps. But at school, I was told I could be anything I wanted as long as I set my mind to it. Outside of school, I would hear adults say, Mexicans aren't good for anything, which would impact me in ways my brain couldn't comprehend. As children, a lot of what our values, beliefs, and how we view ourselves stem from the people around us. In the beginning of our life, our family has the biggest impact on us. And as we mature, the next group that impacts us the most are the people we encounter at school. It's at this stage that how we view ourselves really begins to be dominated by how other people view us. And this is called the looking glass effect. And, and as, we, as we see how that really begins to impact ourselves, both cultures were trying to fit me in a neat little box that said, you're American, you fit over here, or you're Mexican, you fit over here. And when you don't know which box you fit in, you can't help but feel like an anomaly. I so badly wanted to fit the box labeled American. As a kid, what I had come to understand being American meant was all your family was born in America. You, your family only spoke English. You saw your grandparents all the weekend. You only ate American food. And for vacations, you went to Disneyland. And I would remember that this was how I viewed it, and those are the cultural parameters that my brain had constructed at of what being American meant. This label of being American would be reinforced when, I, when one of my classmates made a statement about my lunch. I was in second grade, and just like when, whenever any teacher calls for lunch, everybody races to the line. I was the first one in line, but all my classmates were out their cubbies, grabbing their lunch boxes. I would hear them glee with joy as they uncovered their treasures for the day. And if they didn't like what the parents packed for them, they would just share with the other students. I decided enough was enough, and when I got home, I was going to tell my mom to pack my lunch. So I get home that day, and I told my mom to do just that. She goes out that evening and she buys me a black lunchbox with a neon green trim from Walmart. What she packed in it for me was homemade enchiladas made from her own tortilla that she made by hand, stuffed with black beans covered in her own tomato sauce made from Roma tomatoes and topped off with Mexican crumbled cheese from Dad's restaurant. She also packed a mango, Takis, and water. I was so excited to be just like the rest of my classmates. The next day, the teacher calls, calls us for lunch, and I dart for the cubbies. Everyone starts mentioning when they have, and that's when I chime in. I start pulling out my things, my enchiladas, mango, takis, and water, 
and they're all looking at me with puzzled looks, followed by laughter. And what is that? That's not food. And the boy that said that was white, blue-eyed, and with sandy blonde hair. What he had in his lunchbox was a Coke, an apple, Lay's chips, and a PB&J sandwich. It's staggering the amount of cultures we have in America. According to the Census Bureau, every 33 seconds, there is a new immigrant that enters into America. You know, I can only imagine the kind of culture that they're bringing in with them as they explore everything America has to offer them. As children, the culture we grew up in, that's how we begin to see and perceive the world. And when all you know is your own culture, then any culture you encounter to you is different. And we label it as different. The sad part is, is that childlike idea of, oh, that's different, I don't like that, grows up with us. And, and while in my case, I grew up in both cultures, that allowed me to see the difference. And we can see these effects in our language, in the taste in our food, in our neighborhoods, in the music we have. We can't assume that just because someone doesn't share the same culture as us, that we can't relate to them. I want to push back on that false narrative that we have constructed in our minds. We have constructed in our minds. I think that us being different is exactly what makes us the same. I come to this conclusion by looking at how culture is defined through the lens of sociology. The American Sociological Association defines culture as languages, customs, beliefs, arts, rules, knowledge, and collective identities and memories made by members of a social group that create meaning, a meaningful social environment. If we look at cultures through this definition that sociology has defined culture as, we begin to see that we aren't so different. For instance, let's look at how Mexican culture has been looked at historically. Mexico is lo located on the North American continent. They established, their, they declared their independence September 10th, 1810. Their national spoken language is Spanish. F common popular foods known as Mexican include tacos, quesadillas, tamales, and the wide use of the chili pepper. National holidays include Independence Day, Dia de los Muertos, which is kind of like Halloween, and Christmas. Now, let's switch to American culture. The United States was found on the North American continent. They declared the independence July 4th, 1776. The national spoken language is English, but other languages are found within it. Popular foods known, as, or, known, con, known or considered as American include hamburgers, hot dogs, and barbecue. Wait, I forgot there's one more, Chick-fil-A. We're also known by Chick-fil-A. <laughs> we also have national holidays. They include Independence Day, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. That's a lot of similarities, right? Or do you disagree? If you disagree, I want you to recall what we stated as culture through the lens of sociology. In both these cultures, we have languages, customs, beliefs, and art. Behind each of these concepts that make up culture is a person who speaks just like us, who, who has beliefs just like us, and who feels just like us. Think of all the cultures in our world as a sorting cube. You know that toy where you would fit shapes 
into the correct slots and they would end up inside of the sorting cube. Each shape has its own unique characteristic and it can't be forced to fit where it can't fit. But ultimately, they all end up inside of the cube. We are the shapes that go inside of the sorting cube and the earth itself is the cube. If we can learn to be understanding and open of other cultures, we can, we can begin to understand one another. So the next time that you run into someone that doesn't speak the same language as you or believe the same things as you, remember that they really aren't so different from you. Thank you.